So good afternoon. First of all, I'm thankful to organizers, especially Dr. Durvesh and Dr. Mishra, to give me, for giving this opportunity to speak here on this forum. So I'll be talking about reading from ECMO. Since morning, we have talked that how we place the patient on ECMO, how we cannulate. Probably much more difficult decision than taking a decision for placing a patient on it. Because once you start reading, then only you can anticipate that what is going to happen. So how to read, what to do for these patients, what to look for, this is what exactly we are going to discuss. We all know that meaning is basically whether we talk about ventilated or we talk about that more. It is basically a reduction. In ECMO, when we say weaning, it means either we are reducing the flow, pump flow, we are reducing the gas flow, or actually we are reducing FIO. Depending upon which ECMO we are supporting the patient. If it is the VA ECMO, then probably the methodology will be different. If it is the VB ECMO, the method for weaning will be different. It can go from hours to days, depending upon how patient is responding. And this is basically a method how we can try to take the patient away from the lung support or heart lung support. <coughs> Similarly, a very common terminology what we use during the ECMO run is a trial-on. That's the end point. Once we have completed the successful weaning, we just try to make the patient completely away without the cannula. The cannula is there, circuit is there, but we are making him completely off ECMO so that we are sure that after removing ECMO, the patient will be able to tolerate with the whatever support the patient is presently uh, is being supported. So when to think of weaning? The most important time when you have initiated the ECMO, the next thing after starting the ECMO, you should start planning that when I will wean this patient from ECMO, how I am going to wean this patient or what is our destination for this particular ECMO management. Because it is not in every case you will be able to successfully clean this patient. Probably patient might be needing a bridge to bridge or bridge to uh, transplant or some type of situation based to know. So since beginning you have to start thinking of that, okay, I have put the patient on ECMO. This was the indication. Now what will be my targets to win this patient? And second, definitely, you will start weaning your patient when the parental problem has resolved. If the patient is being supported uh, for the uh, cardiogenic shock, once the cardiac functions has recovered, or if the patient is purely on VVX for any ARDS or respiratory issues, in those situations, once the lungs have started showing the Or uh, we found that the disease is irreversible, it is not going to be approved, but there is some complication which is not going to sustain the life of the patient. So all these decisions for weaning should be taken into consideration whenever we come across. So what is the prerequisites? Patient should be, most importantly, patient should be hemodynamically stable. And definitely the gas exchange, if the patient has been placed for PV ECMO for respiratory issues, so the gas exchange must be improved. Other organ functions, not necessarily all the organ functions because when we put the patient on ECMO and especially VA ECMO, the time when we are placing these patients on ECMO, they are hemodynamically unstable and it's not only a one organ, the heart, other organs including the liver and kidney are affected and almost 50% of the patients who are on VA ECMO will develop some or the other stages of acute kidney injury. So we have to look at the other organs as well, especially for the liver. If the liver is recovering or has recovered, then it will be possibly we should think of weaning these patients because otherwise there is a more risk of failure of the weaning. Acute kidney injury, if it is recovering or patient has been settled with the renal replacement therapy, then there is no contraindication for weaning these patients from F. Then if the patient is not expected to recover, then that's the time to think of talking about the transplant and assist devices and our clinical assessment, the lab values. Radiological evaluation in the form of echocardiography and X-ray are suggestive of improvement and that should be the time when we should think of the weaning. So there is a difference that VA ECMO weaning 
and VBA mobile. This is not the same. In the subsequent slides, we will be talking and we will be discussing that how it is different and how uh, we are going to wean these patients if the patient is on VA ECMO or when the patient is on VBA ECMO. So it's the first assessment criteria because definitely the primary pathology is different. When a patient is for the VA ECMO, he is having myocardial dysfunction. So we have to look for the focus should be on the cardiac function along with the metabolic parameters and other organ functions. But when we talk about the VBA ECMO weaning, our focus should be on the gas exchange, mechanics of breathing and work of breathing. Because other parameters are, cardiac functions are fine and other organ functions are doing fine. Then, how do we do the VA? It is totally different when we talk about VA ECMO and when we talk about VBA. And duration of VA. Again, VA ECMO weaning may be of the shorter duration as compared to the VBA ECMO. Because we know that the VBA ECMO is running for weeks, not on days. So when we wean, we go very slowly, we see the response and we can go back again to the full support and then we again we start weaning and it may take few days to wean these patients. However, for V8 more, we can wean over hours or some time if it is a failed then possibility. So let's take a VV8 more weaning, how do we wean? The basic thing, what we should keep in mind that patients should be able to participate in gas exchange by all, above 50%. When his, the patient's natural lung or native lung is participating more than 50%, it means this patient is ready for weaning from air. And definitely respiratory mechanics have improved. It's not only the gas exchange, but actually the work of breathing, because that is another very important component that if the patient is maintaining his, his or her gas exchange with the, while weaning in progress, but patient is having a abdominal breathing, then possibly this is not the candidate to, to be. And the ventilatory settings are the same. It's a moderate ventilatory setting. We have to go up with the settings. P should be less than 10. PF ratio is more than 100 with the FIO2 of less than 0.5. So we have to look at the balance that the, we are reducing the membrane lung and we are allowing natural lung to participate in the gas exchange without much of the increased work of breathing. So, can anybody tell, is this patient with this ventilatory parameter, is he ready for the weaning? <coughs> yes, no. Why? Why? Because lung compliance is very poor. You can see the lung compliance is very poor and patient is possibly uh, having a frank ARDS and generating a tidal volume of just 51 ml. And this is the usual course when we initiate ECMO in the first couple of days or three days or even sometime for a week time, these patients have a so low tidal volume in spite of the good ventilatory settings. So definitely this patient is not ready for me. So how to we? Once we have seen all parameters and we are thinking that our patient is ready for me, what to do? Should we decrease the pump flow? Should we decrease the FIO2 or should we decrease the sweep gas? So decreasing pump flow, this is a challenge at, uh, because if you keep reducing the flow less than 2.5 liter per minute, there is a more risk of thrombosis. And it's already a prolonged ECMO run. You might have changed the circuit and you might not have changed the circuit. So more risk of thrombosis. So never try to reduce flow, preferably less than 3 liter per minute, but below 2.5 you should never go for whenever we are weaning a patient from VVM. FIO2, yes, it can be reduced, but again, you have to see for um, the, the oxygenation, how it is taking place. The best way, some centers follow the decreasing FIO2, and most of the centers, they follow decreasing the sweep gas flow, because by decreasing sweep gas flow, you are actually weaning both components, oxygenation as well as the ventilation, means carbon dioxide. So, this is usually a preferred method for reducing the sweep gas flow rather than decreasing the pump flow. So here, how we go about it, it's an oxygen challenge test. What we do since day one, we keep checking, increasing the oxygen to 100% on ventilator and we see that how much is the PO2 has improved. And we keep looking at it, if you do it on the day one, there will be hardly participation of the lung and there will be hardly any improvement in the PO2 level. But 
once the lung starts recovering, and it has been shown that if this goes beyond 250 um, uh, millimeter of mercury, it means your patient is ready to wean for um, ECMO and will tolerate the moderate ventilatory setting. So this is important that we keep doing oxygen challenge tests and we keep seeing that how the lung, this will show a good trend about the lung recovery. Another test, what we do, and in fact, we have to increase the oxygenation when we are weaning, try to wean the patient. Because in, if you don't increase the oxygen to the moderate setting, even the patient is maintaining saturation, the hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction is blunted when patient is on ECMO support. So when you withdraw, try to withdraw the ECMO support, at that time, there will be a drastic drop of saturation. So you should keep your oxygenation at a moderate <coughs> Uh, uh, a moderate ventilatory setting, so therefore you go from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. And by decreasing sweep gas flow, you can look at the carbon dioxide as well, that patient is not retaining, because what we see routinely in these patients, that oxygenation improves, but still the gas exchange is not sufficient, ventilation is not adequate, and patient is starts retaining carbon dioxide, and usually remain in respiratory acidosis. So these things should always be kept in mind when we are weaning the respiratory act. How we manage the ventilator, whenever we are planning to wean the patient from VV ECMO, the ventilatory setting should go moderately high. So whenever we are reducing the ECMO flow, we increase the respiratory rate because initially we had brought down our FiO2 level to 0.3, the, our target P, uh, pressures, uh, plateau pressures were less than 25 and we were keeping a PEEP of 10, 12, depending upon. And so we increase the rate. We keep the lowest peep, whatever the way the oxygenation is maintained, and we try to increase the plateau pressure so that the adequate tidal volume is being generated and patient is uh, able to uh, wash out carbon dioxide uh, uh, adequately. So, pre-test criteria, you look at the disease has a resolution is taking place, so x-ray is better, your gas exchange is taking better, your uh, um, the, uh, lung compliance has improved. There is a spontaneous breathing of the patient and generating a good tidal volume. The patient is hemodynamically stable, and your oxygen challenge test is showing 30 kilopascal is roughly around 225 millimeter of mercury above that. And your lungs are participating more in the oxygen delivery and carbon dioxide removal. Then you do a ECMO D um, um, uh, oxygen challenge test where you keep reducing the ECMO FiO2 from 100 to 60, 30 and 21 and you see the response every time you increase. And then you keep reducing the sweep gas flow and look at the response you initially, gradually you keep reducing, you keep checking the blood gases and you see that how much oxygenation and what carbon dioxide levels are there. If there is any time no dynamic instability, our patient is not maintaining oxygenation less uh, more than 88 percent. Our patient is tachypneic. Then it means it is patient is still not ready for weaning, and we should go back on the full support, and we should try look for a cause, and we should try to uh, resolve the issues, and then we should restart the weaning. What to observe? We look at the blood gases. We look at the hemodynamics, there is no fluctuation. We look at the work of breathing, there is no increased work of breathing. Patient is not tachypneic, rate is less than 35. Maintaining oxygen saturation more than 88% and there is no change in the urine output as well. That suggests that possibly the, because there is always organ crosstalk and there is a uh, decreased urine output if there is a, we are putting unnecessary stress on the lungs. Ventilatory setting should be on a moderate setting. But if this kind of a thing happens, that means there is a weaning failure and in this situation, go back on the full ECMO support. And you have to look for the causes now. Was your uh, primary pathology is still existing or it has not resolved that much that the patient is ready to wean? So the first thing, first answer uh, question you have to answer yourself. That patient is not ready, was not ready to be. Okay, fine. We'll wait for 24 to 48 hours. We'll wait for more improvement in the lungs, and then we'll start the weaning again. Look for the sepsis because these all can be a confounding factor in the situation. Patient is already on for three weeks or four weeks on ECMO, and sepsis is creeping in, and possibly that has led to failure in spite of your improvement of your 
lung condition. Most of the time, when patient is on ECMO, this is another issue which causes the failure of weaning from the volume or load. So look for the balance. It is always preferable to weigh the patient every day. If you have a weighing scale on your bed, weigh the patient every day and see the trend that how much uh, weight gain is there or how much fluid retention is there. So make sure that the adequate negative balance because we know that the any increase in the volume more than 10% increases the mortality. So we have to make the patient dry or negative. Look at the electrolyte imbalances because sometimes even the Simple hypokalemia or change in sodium levels can alter the failure of weaning. Muscle weakness, which is very common and has been discussed in the previous lectures as well, that the aggressive physiotherapy and rehabilitation, since day one when you have placed the patient on ECMO, these should be considered very aggressively and early mobilization of these patients are really useful. Nutritional deficiency, especially the phosphorus level. So all these has to be taken in consideration along with the appropriate nutrition which usually we target to start since beginning if the hemodynamics and other parameters are permitting us. And if everything looks normal, definitely even on VV ECMO, look at the echocardiography. Because it is possible that the patient has developed some acute coronary event, there can be some regional low motion abnormality or there can be some development of some valvular dysfunction which can lead to a failure of uh, weaning from a VV ECMO. Moreover, what is important, if the patient is on ECMO for last two weeks or three weeks, there is a possibility that this patient has developed the RV dysfunction. And this, there may be a need of nitric oxide or sometimes we may need to add another arterial cannula to support this patient further in the form of VV ECMO, means uh, we have to support the right, right side of the heart placing an arterial cannula. So this uh, this RV dysfunction sometimes really troubles a lot that your patient was recovering but suddenly you see that the RV has ballooned up and uh, RV uh, contractions are very poor and you need to intervene in this situation excluding volume overload and then uh, you have to start with the sometimes you are get away with the dovitamin infusion but most of the time you need a nitric oxide or sometimes you need to place another arterial cannula. So now coming on the VA, when to wean from VA, because that's a much more challenging patient is having a myocardial dysfunction with the various etiology, it can be toxic, it can be a cardiogenic shock because of the coronary event, Our patient is a post-operative cardiac surgical patient who has developed a cardiogenic shock. So we have to look at several factors. The most important thing we have to see that the cardiac functions have shown improvement and if the ejection fraction is above 25%, it means Possibly, if other parameters are permitting us, we can think of weaning of these patients. Increased pulsatility. This guides about the aortic valve opening. This is very, very important that aortic valve is opening and there is an ejection. And the pulse pressure is above 20 millimeter of mercury. If this is so, it means your cardiac functions have improved and your patient may be ready for weaning. Your mean arterial pressure, with the minimal anotropic or resurrective supports is more than 65 in adult patient. Cardiac index has improved to 2.4. Pulmonary cathodic wedge pressure is not high, less than 18, and central venous pressure is also less than 18. Then you look echocardiography, look at the, with the echocardiography, and we see that the, there is an improvement in the LV contactility. If there was MR, there is a decreased MR or there is a minimal MR. Aortic uh, well, velocity time integral is more than 10 cm and lateral mitral angular velocity is more than 6 cm. These are the parameters which guides us that our patient is ready for weaning. And there is an improved tissue perfusion, so lactates are settling down at decrease less than 2 and the mixed venous oxygen saturation, if your pulmonary artery catheter is in place, you can do a mixed venous oxygen saturation is more than 70 and other organ functions are also settled down. So this is what happens on the VA ECMO, when there is a full support, your ventilator is on rest setting and circuit is flowing. The full, uh, it is completely supported by ECMO and when you are weaning your patient, you go up with the ventilatory setting, you decrease the circuit flow and now it is a normal circulation is taking place. So how do we do this weaning? The first we look at the etiology of the cardiac failure which is compatible with the myocardial recovery. Now, 
we look at the hemodynamic stability, that patient is stable hemodynamically and at least maintaining blood pressure above 90 millimeter of mercury with a minimal inotropic support. There is a pulsatile arterial waveform for last 24 hours and mean arterial pressure is more than 60 with low dose of catecholamine. The patient, uh, the metabolic disturbances has recovered, means metabolic acidosis is settling down and lactates are coming down. Then we look at the pulmonary function, uh, it should not be severely impaired if CaO2 FiO2 ratio is less than 100. That means we have to switch over probably from VA to VV ECMO if the PEEP has been increased at patient. Uh, oxygenation is not improving. Usually, not a problem, but sometimes it can happen. Then next, patient must tolerate the full weaning trial. So we keep doing the hemodynamic and hemocardiographic assessment and ECMO flow is gradually reduced. It is reduced from uh, first, there are different methods actually for reducing. Normally what we follow, we keep decreasing the 500 ml of flow and we keep, after two hours, we keep checking the response that how the echocardiography, what is the hemodynamics, what is the urine output, what about the blood gases. And otherwise you can keep down to 66%, 33% and we can reach to a minimum flow of around 1 to 1.2 liter. And then you can reassess your patient and if the patient is having hemodynamic stability, no increase in the vasopressors and there is no increase worsening of the metabolic parameters, then it means your patient is ready for weaning. You reinforce your findings with ejection, looking at the echocardiography when ejection fraction is more than 25%, VTI is more than 10, and TDSA is more than 6, cardiac index is more than 2.5. That means your patient is ready for uh, further trialing off and we can decamulate of this patient. So these are the hemodynamic parameters we always look for whenever a patient is on VA ECMO. These are some studies which show that the pulp Pulse pressure, aortic VTI, ejection fraction, and lateral mitral anal velocity are the strong predictors for successful weaning from uh, ECMO in these patients. This is another uh, paper shows that there was a non-weaned patient, they did not have any improvement. When they reduced the ECMO, there was no improvement in the ejection fraction or no improvement in the uh, mitral valve uh, lateral anal velocity. However, those patients, they were able to wean. They, there was significant improvement in those parameters. So these are certain papers which has studied along with that the right ventricular ejection fraction. That is another factor. Um, I'll try to show you a video from our own hospital, if it runs, that a patient who was of aluminum phosphate poisoning and we had weaned, patient was ready for weaning from every parameter, but there was a severe RV dysfunction and for that, we have to keep this patient for no, not this, uh, for at least uh, 48 more hours on ECMO because whenever we try to win this patient, he had a RV dysfunction. I believe uh, there is no VLC player in this. Okay. There is no VLC player, I believe. Okay, no problem. Any player? Is there? Just this, 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 this complete file. Could have taken some. It can. You can see this. RV, RV function is so good, but RV is so good. This was while I put a bunch of the past century. Hold it, say, child, was this century. Hold it. So you can see the RV is distended. LV was doing fine. So, 
that led to so this um, we had to wait for 48 hours just for improvement of the RV function. So this is another thing. We, wherever you are weaning from V ECMO, you have to look at the RV function as well. So this is the role of echocardiography. We have to look left ventricular failure dysfunction or right ventricular dysfunction while weaning. Systolic or diastolic dysfunction and that has to be managed accordingly. If there is a development of any new reasonable motion abnormality or there is a mitral regal station, if it is severe, this will definitely obstruct your weaning. Or there is any dynamic outflow obstruction where we need to stop or reduce any vasopressives or uh, uh, anotropic support. If the patient has developed any peritoneal cardiac temporal, patient was doing fine, but when you evaluated, you found that there is a significant pericardial tamponade and if you drain it, the cardiac function will improve. Our patient has developed the pulmonary hypertension or there is a hypovolemia. Sometimes this is the cause of failure. So you have to, echocardiography will be very helpful uh, when you are weaning your patient, as you are trialing of your patient, you are planning for it. So is weaning is equivalent to survival? No, it is not. Because there are certain factors. Uh, there can be a mortality after a success of weaning because of several reasons and these are the common factors which are associated with the higher mortality after successful weaning from ECMO. A diabetic patient, patient is obese, door to VECMO implantation time was high, our patient our CPI duration was high, poor renal and liver functions which is not recovering, our persistent high lactate levels in spite of uh, uh, ECMO support or if the patient is having a high SOFI score when we uh, initiated the ECMO. So once we have done the successful weaning and our patient is tolerating the weaning from ECMO, it's a time to trial off. So method and duration depends whether we are doing a trial off for VECMO or VECMO. VECMO trial off usually for 2 to 3 hours, not more than that. VECMO trial off can be go for longer time because you don't reduce the flow, you just switch off the uh, gas flow so that the blood is flowing in the circuit, there is no risk of clotting. Uh, Usually, once you have done, completed it, it's better to, before, before decanulating, increase the flow so that there is a minimal risk of uh, clotting of the surface. For VECMO, we use the bridge and with the bridge, the flow is only in the machine. We maintain the flow and in between, we keep open the bridge so that the cannulas are being flushed. And then finally, um, we keep checking the ACT every 30 minutes, both the side of ACT on the machine side and patient side because you are putting a clamp in between. And this trial off usually for two hours and then you decalibrate this patient. While doing the VECMO trialing off, your attention and team should be focused on the patient. Keep checking blood gases, venous oxygen saturation and lactate levels at 30 minutes, 90 minutes and two hours or three hours depending upon when you are ready for the taking off. Check the mean artery pressure, pulse pressure, there should not be any tachycardia, there should not be any drop in oxygen saturation and echocardiography support so that we are comfortable and confident of successful trial of. When we talk about a VV ECMO, we are not reducing the flow, we just disconnect the gas supply line. The green tubing, if you remember, is connected to the um, uh, to, uh, to the oxygenator uh, through the oxygen blender and you just disconnect the line uh, so that there is no gas flow. It means whatever blood is coming, it, there is no gas exchange is taking place and is being returned to the patient. If the patient is tolerating it well for few hours or some time, if uh, you are not sure um, for 12 hours or 24 hours, then you can always think of decannulation. While preparing for it, uh, weaning and decalibration, it is important that every team member should be present or at least should be available quickly whenever a problem is uh, there. So the critical care specialist, cardiovascular surgeon, ECMO coordinator, technician, perfusion team, nurses, OT nurses, eco technician, respiratory therapist, uh, physical therapist, all, everybody should be there and how we should prepare, all drugs, emergency drugs should be ready, antibiotics should be administered before decalibration. Anticoagulation should be stopped just prior to decannulation. Before that, continue with the anticoagulation. If the patient is on uh, VA ECMO and requires some vasoactive drugs, prepare it and ensure that the line is running. Keep blood and blood product ready. Sometimes there is a bleeding while decannulating, especially for the VA ECMO, because they are repairing the artery uh, uh, while de uh, doing the decannulation. There may be a risk of bleeding. Look at the blood gases and uh, never forget to increase the 
weight can be setting to the moderate level. Decalation for BFMO always preferred is the surgical one because even you have placed the percutaneous uh, cannula to a BFMO, whenever you are removing, the, there will not be any healing. So it's better to repair this artery because otherwise there will be more complications of um, pseudo formation of pseudo reserve. Or sometime we have seen the bleeding in our initial cases. We have seen there is a pop up and there is a massive bleeding from the um, rupture of the pseudo reserve. VVFMO, no issues. You can just place a transfixation suture or even simple pressure is more than enough for this patient for 30 minutes. Always check and then place a tracing over this. Post decanulation, it is important that you should have a, a you are monitoring hemodynamics thoroughly. You are looking at the x-ray, you check blood gases, you look at the hemoglobin and other electrolytes and other parameters. If there is a fever, because still the time ECMO is there, you are maintaining your temperature. So if there is a hyperparexia, treat it, especially for the VV ECMO, because the oxygen demand will go high. So it's better to bring down the normal therapy. So always recheck your ventilation, watch for bleeding hematoma, and if it is the VA ECMO, then definitely the distal per perfusion and distal pulses where artery has been repaired. Sometimes there is a thrombus move to the distal part of the artery and require a um, um, thrombus removal. So to conclude, evaluate your patient thoroughly for readiness of bleeding, whether it's a VA ECMO or VB ECMO, look at those parameters. Um, for uh, VEHMO, you have to look at more focus on the echocardiography and metabolic parameters. For VEHMO, you look at the respiratory dynamics as well as to the uh, mechanics. Optimize the ventilatory setting. VEHMO, you keep reducing the flow, while on VEHMO, you keep reducing the sweep gas flow. Trial off may be longer during the VEHMO, it can go for hours or days. Always monitor hemodynamics, look at the blood gases, echocardiography, and anticoagulation. If there is a failure of weaning, go back to the full support and then rethink, think about the cause, look for the cause, correct it and then restart the VD. Frequent echocardiographic assessment, especially during the VEHMO, you look at the different fraction, you look at the lateral mitral lateral velocity and aortic VTI. Decanulation on VEHMO, always surgical and a good communication and integrated team approach is the key to success for successful weaning and decanulation. Thank you very much if you have any questions.